ever feel like there's just got to be a better way to, you know, do this whole life thing. Yeah, like a user manual would be nice. Exactly. Well, our listener today is hoping to find some wisdom in the philosophy of Cleanthes. Ancient Greek Stoic philosopher. Not exactly light reading, but... Uh, but surprisingly relevant to our modern struggles. Right. We're talking contentment, fate, the good life, big stuff. So no pressure, Cleanthes. Let's jump right in with this one. He needs little who desires but little. Simple, but powerful. It's easy to lose sight of that in our more is more culture. Right, we're constantly bombarded with messages to buy, upgrade, achieve. Exactly, Cleanthes isn't saying we should live like monks. More like, recognize when enough is enough. Be present with what we have. Finding contentment in the now. Precisely. Okay, this next one's a little less Zen garden, a little more roller coaster ride, Clanthe said. The fates lead the willing, but drag the unwilling. Yeah, that's the stoic view on fate in a nutshell. Life's gonna happen whether we're on board or not. So we have no say in the matter. Not exactly. It's more about choosing our attitude, you know. Are we fighting the current or accepting the flow? Choosing how we respond, even if we can't control the events themselves. Right. It's a form of freedom, even within limitations. Interesting. Okay, this next quote from Cleanthes had me wondering if he was having a bad day. He wrote, People walk in wickedness all their lives, or, at any rate, for the greater part of it. Oof, yeah, he doesn't sugarcoat it, does he? So are we all doomed to a life of wickedness? Well, the Stoics believed in this constant striving for virtue. It's a journey, right? And maybe what Cleanthes is getting at is that it's easy to get sidetracked, to lose sight of what truly matters. To get caught up in the day-to-day -day and forget the bigger picture. Exactly. And speaking of the bigger picture, Cleanthes' hymn to Zeus paints a pretty awe-inspiring one. He writes, Not a single thing that is done on earth happens without you, God, for you have so joined all things into one, the good and the bad. This gets to the heart of the Stoic concept of Logos, this divine, rational order of the universe. Everything has its place, even the things we might perceive as bad. So even that flat tire on the way to work. It's all part of a larger plan. We might not always understand it, but it's there. Hmm. It's a different way of looking at things. Okay, so last quote from Cleanthes, and it brings us full circle. The wretched, whoever long for the getting of good things, neither see nor hear God's universal law. See, he's connecting it back to that idea of desire and contentment. Are we chasing external things, or are we seeking that inner alignment with this universal law? And he seems to be saying, those who are always chasing they miss out on the good stuff. They're so focused on what they lack, they miss the beauty of what is. The good reminder for all of us, I think, to appreciate what we have. To find contentment in the journey. And to remember, maybe there's a method to the madness. Down, I stay composed Even if in the face of adversity. I don't expose, I gotta still resolve. I never retreat, I don't face the trouble. I won't accept defeat. Step up. I keep my head high, never show despair. Step up. Step up. I stay focused on my goals, on my ground, I'm aware. Step up. Step up. Persevere through the pain and the strife Step up, step up Cause I'm a man of strength I live this stoic life I'm unpredictable, unshakable Yeah Through the storms I'm unpredictable, unshakable I keep my mind steady My heart cold is still I'm unbreakable, unshakable I know it's wrong I am old, stoic mindset, and my veins is gold. I'll face the challenges, never lose sight. Stoic manhood, in a stoic fight. Head high, like a pillar of strength in a path of honor. I go to great lengths, pain and strife. I turn it to fuel in the stoic arena where virtues rule. Step up, step up, step up, step up, step up. Step up. In, step up. In the whispers of the wind, stoic echoes ring I'm the architect of my fate, I build my own wing I stand tall, unusual like a stone Stoic principles in every verse I've known Holes in my focus in the grind, I'm aware In the face of challenge, I declare Through pain and strife, I navigate A stoic man in the world I cultivate I wear my scars like badges of pride Yeah. In the stoic rhythm, I let the beat guide yeah. Never showing despair, never taking a dive in the stoic anthem, I thrive I'm unbreakable, unshakable yeah. Through the storms, I'm unbreakable, unshakable I keep my 
my mind steady, my heart cold is still. I'm unbreakable, unshakable. He was rather um, big fellow, and so he um, had the word out that when I see this guy less from the disc jockey, I'm going to knock him in my mouth for having a big mouth. So I was driving down Main Street in Columbus, Ohio, had my son in a car, and I always had this little saying, hey, if anybody ever put a threat on me, I'm going to make him honor it. So I saw this guy in the street. So I pull around. I said, excuse me, I'll be right back. Got out of the car. I said, hey, man, I heard you said that you were looking for me. I'm Les Brown. He said, you are? I said, yeah. I said, what is it? I'm the one that said that you are an imposter. I said, I want to know what you're going to do about it. He opened his coat and he had a gun there. I said, but whatever I said to hurt your feelings, I want you to know. <laughs> Acknowledge your fears. Carry yourself accordingly. <laughs> and do what makes sense for you. One major fear I've always had, the fear of a dentist. And this fear had me. I didn't have that fear. I saw a movie that most people would not remember. This movie was starring Dustin Hoffman. It's called The Marathon Man with Lawrence Olivier. I mean, he's trying to get a confession out of here. And he took this drill out. Let me tell you something. When he went in Dustin Hoffman's mouth with that drill, I had a dollar worth of popcorn. <laughs> that popcorn went everywhere. <laughs> Do you know I could not go to the dentist for five years? I had left broadcasting, went to the Ohio legislature, had an impacted wisdom tooth. Now that hurts. And I would call, and as soon as the people would answer the phone, I would hang up. I was hurting so bad as a way. And I said, What am I afraid of? I said, Doc, I just can't hear this drill. I mean, if you can do whatever, I just don't I don't need to hear this drill, this drill, that sound, you know, that's the, what gets me, that drill. Don't pull that drill out on me. He said, just calm down, calm down. And it wasn't really bad as I thought it was. One of the things you find out that when you face your fears, it's not as bad as you think it is. And when people tell you, I just can't do it, I, I can't handle it, I mean, really, 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 I can't handle it. What the Live like there's no tomorrow and do what you love. The money will flow. Just because you are going through hell right now doesn't mean you will never smile again. The rights of every man are diminished when the rights of one man are threatened. John F. Kennedy Recognizing that you are not where you want to be is a starting point to begin changing your life. It is not about having what you want, but wanting what you have. We should consider every day lost on which we have not danced at least once. Friedrich Nietzsche One day I made a decision that enough is enough. I'm tired of being average. I'm tired. I'm tired of being good. I'm tired. I want to go to the dealership and buy the best car. I want to move to the nicest neighborhood. I want to fly first class. I want to go to Hawaii. I want to go to Australia. I, want, I made a decision. Enough is enough. It's showtime. Will the real Eric Thomas please stand up? Some of you in the room right now, you are where you are. You're giving 60% when you have 120 in you. Why? Because you've never made a decision. Shh, there are those of you in this room. You already there. Your problem is this and stuff. You don't want to give up the goal. You're talented. You just don't want to give up sleep. Listen to me, pound for pound, any agent in the room, pound for pound, motivational speaker, pound for pound, entrepreneur, pound for pound, athlete, pound for pound, weightlifter, pound for pound, whatever you do, I guarantee you when you do it, nobody can do it like you do it. The problem is you don't hardly do it. You love sleep too much. You love that alcohol too much. You love that substance too much. You love that vice too much. There's something that you love more than yourself than your dream, than your goals. Watch what happens when you have a goal that only has two reasons. See how long that lasts. Watch a goal that has 50 reasons and see how... There's some, somebody called me the other day on an interview, stupid question. E.T., what do you feel like on the days that you don't feel like... I said, ask, ask the question again, please. 
Well, what do you do on the days that you don't feel like? So I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm way past that. Every day I feel like. Every day I feel like eating. Yeah. Every day I feel like giving my wife the best life. He that hath not won and the self same general end always as long as he liveth cannot possibly be one and the self same man always. But this will not suffice except thou add also what ought to be this general end. For as the general conceit and apprehension of all those things which upon no certain ground are by the greater part of men deemed good cannot be uniform and agreeable, but that only which is limited and restrained by some certain proprieties and conditions, as of community, that nothing be conceived good, which is not commonly and publicly good, so must the end also that we propose unto ourselves be common and sociable. For he that doth direct all his own private motions and purposes to that end, all his actions will be agreeable and uniform, and by that means will be still the same man. Life is too short to hate anyone. Ultimately, the people who mind don't matter, and the people who matter don't mind. The first and greatest victory is to conquer yourself. Plato Never say maybe. If you want to say no, say no. Talking without thinking is like shooting without aiming. The present moment is the key to enlightenment. Eckhart Tolle I can write a book. I never had time before. I was always on the road. Pack it, unpack it. I was always on the road, right? And so writing a book is better than speaking. Why? Because in order to make money speaking, you have to be present. When you write a book, it's passive income. While you're asleep and people buying it, you're making money. So I actually can make more money with a book than I can speaking. And sometimes tragedies strike not to hurt you, but to elevate you in a way, if the tragedy never happened, you would never be elevated. There is a blessing in every lesson. Come on, there's a blessing in every lesson. So number one, you got to become a good decision maker to make your dreams become a reality. So I made a decision. I was going to wake up every single day and I was going to write. I was going to wake up every single day. Do me a favor, in your phone right now, I want you to write down good decisions, bad decisions. All right? Good decisions, bad decisions. I want you to write that down. Good decisions. Say it with me. Good decisions, bad decisions. So let me just say this to you, and I want to make this clear. All right? I remember, you know, years ago, we used to say when we was kids, you know, somebody would say, well, that person is middle age, that person is old. Right? You can't say that anymore. Why? Because of the decisions that a lot of us are making now. There are kids who are 17 and 18 who are old. Why? Because they're not going to make it to 19. So they're seniors. Like that's it. They're 19, 20. They're making some bad decisions. They're not going to make it to 21. So they're actually a senior citizen at 15 because they don't have but three or four years left to go. Does that make sense? Because they made what kind of decisions? Bad decisions. So here's what I want you to do for me. I want you to ask yourself every single day, are the decisions I'm making good? Because if you're a good decision maker, it means you are, to get, you are guaranteed to make your dreams become a reality. I told you my goal was to write a book and make what list? New York Times bestsellers list. And week one, we made it. Why? Because of the decisions we made. There was a whole lot of decisions that it took to get here. And so in order for you to make your dreams and goals become a reality, you got to be a great decision maker. Does that make sense? And listen to me, every, every outcome you get, I had an uncle who died of cirrhosis of the liver. It didn't happen by accident. It didn't happen by accident. He died maybe 50, 60. It wasn't by accident. How, how do you die of cirrhosis of the liver? What, for the most part, what happens? You, somebody said, drinking, drinking what? 
You're not drinking water. <laughs> not, you're not drinking water. Like you just, oh, listen to me very close.